how will Man City set up without Rodri in their team? The natural replacement for Rodri is probably Kovacic, but so Manchester City want a more defensive presence in front of the defence. They don't really have too many options. So one option, Mateus Nunez, who's, you know, flattered to deceive. I, I thought it was an odd transfer at the time, if I'm honest. Too similar to Kovacic. Yeah, uh, and has done very little. Uh, up until now. Another option is dipping into the academy. Jacob Wright has been unreal for the under-21s. I've been told. I've not watched much of the under-21s. I've been honest. Or another option is uh, John Stones completing the transformation from centre-back to defensive midfielder, which will be great for certain fans who I think like, maybe like probably 15 years ago would have made, made have just chucked that out there on Twitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? When he was centre-back for there. Everton. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he has evolved hugely and I, th I actually, I think the biggest talking point with Rodri out for me is Rico Lewis. Mm. I think watching Carl Walker over the last six months, I think he's been really struggling. I think he's poor on the ball. Um, he doesn't seem switched on as before. He's doing his tappy thing now at corners. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working. Um, and I just think whenever I see Rico Lewis play, I think he's fantastic. You go back to that Chelsea game. Uh, he was of such use there and actually bizarrely the, the Arsenal game was wild for um, Gvardiol's positioning in that game I've I was sort of watching it and I was going look at Gvardiol look, what's he doing there but he was never really the difference is he wasn't touching the ball he was a decoy essentially to kind of consume the Arsenal players to allow Do Doku to have the space on the left hand side but Rico Lewis I think is, is much more of a you know confident player in those positions the problem is as you say I don't Kovacic sat there and it was a it was a one three six I've been kind of calling it. Over the course of a season, I think he needs I think he's gonna need someone with him a little bit more than a Rodri. Rodri kind of go, oh let's just, you know, we'll, we'll be fine. All. Yeah. And it's a kind of who those players, it's a weird one where in any other team you don't have that kind of second guy. And with Man City, when Rodri has been playing, John Stones you've had, you've had Bernardo Silva, you've had Rico Lewis, you've had all those different options. I feel like he's going to go big on Rico Lewis. I think we might have seen the end of Carl Walker here. Yeah, it's huge. Calvin Phillips on loan? <laughs> recall? <laughs> no recall? Not bad, sure. I'd love that. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's, it's all about defining what Rodri is and he's one of arguably one of the best players in the world you know or, or you know certainly a Ballon d'Or you know nominee yeah he's absolutely unbelievable and I think he allows City to play literally any way he can control a game he can play tempo he can step up he can sit back he can receive he can if you look you know those radars that come up and it's with, with, with Rodri it's like he's every single yeah. radar if you can't see me right now I'm drawing a circle <laughs> um but yeah it's one, it's one of those things where he just every single aspect of the game even physically, so I, I personally think it's it's going to have to be a bit of a two man job. Mm. Like you 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 can't replace that with one person, in my opinion. So it's going to have to be: do you give Rico Lewis more touches, and do you allow John Stones to do more physical aspect of that in certain phases of play? It's going to have to be a team effort. Also, like in terms of the stockpiling of large footballers, which Arsenal and and Man City have done, it. and Man City kind of did it first, I guess. It's like John Stones hasn't started, didn't start the game. Um, Diaz is obviously kind of has to play. Guardio has to play. Kanji has to play. So we're now in a kind of, you're in a weird situation there where, you know, are you going to try and get John Stones in, into this team? Like, I'm fascinated to see if his role returns back mm. to to that position. We, oh, you guys know about the Premier League now, by the way. We were, we're, so we were doing a video for the Premier League and, and we were doing sort of pilots before they went out. And, one video, the first video we did was the Man City Chelsea game, and what we kind of reverted back to, and actually I'm getting confused as I'm talking here because it might have been video on my channel. But what we f went and found was the the Sane uh, Sterling season, and Fernandinho was playing right back, and then kind of stepped into this yeah. sort of eight position. So that's why I keep coming back to the Rico Lewis thing, where I think, and I, I guess the thing to remember here with Man City is that like Kevin De Bruyne gets injured and it's not even that big a deal like for the biggest game of the season against mm. Arsenal so they have got such depth um everywhere i think the the what's going to be interesting here is in the big games mm. what do you kind of rely on here yeah. like what I, road do you go down I mean, last year was yeah. the first that we saw 
Rodri really contributing the final third as well. Like he popped yeah. up with 17 league goals and assists. Absolutely mad from your wow. your club Six. defensive midfielder. Yeah. His long range shooting's brilliant. Even, and some of the yeah, he's got he's got he's literally got it all, as Alex says. So that is huge responsibility to put on Rico Lewis, who is completely different physically to Rodri and completely different experience level. I think he's been brilliant so far for City and gets me incredibly excited about the future of England's midfield as well because for so long it looked like we were really short in that area and now with Wharton, Mainu, Lewis coming through there are so many options in there for Carsley or whoever gets the job full time but the John Stones point is interesting as well you know he's 15th for minutes played this season and he's only started one league game and it does feel like Diaz, Akanji, Gavardio are picked every week and then the right back rotates it, it does feel like it's a big ask for John Stones to go in there, having played very little football, and replicate what he has done in the past for City when he's been stepping out of defence into midfield. Like, he has never really started in defensive midfield. Mm. And Kovacic, you know, did start the season very well. He you know, spoke publicly about the fact that he'd been watching a lot of videos of Rodri in the summer, which is quite sweet to admit that you're basically in awe of your teammate. As well, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but he is trying to learn on the job. And... It is slightly different, though. You know, his tackle success rate this season is below 50%. Rodri's hasn't dipped below 65 for the last four seasons. You know, they are just very different players. And, and I do think this is just a, a huge, huge concern. Yeah, Kovacic is too rash in the tackle. I think to your big games point, I think it's basically about deciding, OK, if we had Rodri, what's the thing we absolutely needed him to do today? Was it right. tempo setting? Was it threat from the edge of the box? Was it uh, controlling transitions? And basically, if you're playing against Spurs... Uh, or you know, if I'm using an example from last year for us, Liverpool jumped onto us, so it made sense to have Jorginho close because his short passing and sort of baiting teams in is perfect. Right. And if that's what City wanted to do, I'd say Rico Lewis because in terms of the angle bias, all that stuff, he's brilliant at it. But if you're controlling tempo, I'd probably look at Gundogan. Do you know what I mean? It just depends mm. on the game. Yeah, I think yeah. it will be because the the problem with Rodri, he's a, he's an answer to everything. He can literally do everything. So I think it's it's gonna in the big games. I think it'll depend on on who it is. I do think it is Kovacic and one other though. What I can't, what I'm struggling to see is Stones just sitting there the whole time. No, I time. don't think you'll be that. I don't. I, I think mean, in certain games, because is his long range passing good enough? Can he get do that quickly enough? I think even when he's stepped in. He's kind of had, not Rodri to hold his hand, but you've got Rodri to take up one space so you kind of step into another space. And again, in terms of decoys, Pep does this a lot. John Stones was that a lot of the time. Mm. He was kind of going, oh, I know that's an annoying place to stand. I'm going to go stand there so that I have to essentially freeze those two defenders because he can't totally leave me. But that's so different to being there and being yep. that sort of, that metronome. It's a good point, Gundogan, in terms of stepping into a double pivot. Bernardo Silva is another new role for him mm. where you kind of go, like if, if you're having like, I guess it's your 100 touch man, but someone who's going to get you a few more key passes. I think mm. Kovacic is, can be the 100 touch man. I'm not sure he's going to provide a no. key pass. So it might be another one. You chuck another name in there. Bernardo Silva, you absolutely have the, the energy there. Um, brilliant on the ball, can dribble out of trouble, can play a key pass as well. And but it, then you lose him. You lose his uh, yeah, but, intelligence but, elsewhere. You know, with Bernardo Silva, does he start from the right? But say you're camped on the edge of their box, does he come central? And he's the one who's picking that either needle pass that Rodri can do. Yeah. But actually, further back, if you're in build up and you're like, we don't really want him there because he's a little bit too small. Do you put someone else in there, or, or whatever? You know, whatever Pep's thinking is. I think it. Yeah, I'm fascinated to see. I think it will be Kovacic and one other. And I the whole the whole time. I think a lot of it. Yeah, I think a lot of it because I just like I can't imagine. I can't see any other one who's like, you know, the guy who just stands still. Yeah. And Pep talks about that. Yeah. He says that there's got to be that one guy who kind of stands still. Because you can't... So if you have John Stones and Rico Lewis, you kind of... I can't... I haven't seen Rico Lewis in there just standing still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen John Stones in there. Just, I've seen him... I, I've seen him give it to Rodri, them, the opposition run away, and then them trot up into that space. It's different. Mm. Has he got the discipline? Uh, this is me, who's not not you know an avid city. Has he got the discipline? And I just he's a Kovacic. Bit, yeah, in terms, he's a bit jumpy for me. Jumps out of his hole a little bit too much, mm. but not since watching those Rodri videos in the yeah, summer, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, players can adapt. You know what I mean? That's and that's the yeah. beauty of football, yeah. isn't it? You know, play, you can give players instructions. <laughs> it's just really unfortunate though, because Rodri has missed ten games with injury in his entire career so far, yeah, and five of those crazy. were this season already. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really unfortunate. And I do think, you know, I talked about it quite a lot in the summer that they did need to sign a more natural six as a replacement. 
you know, what are we, five, six games into the season? It is just a nightmare scenario. And and who, to be honest, wants to be brought in and play a backup role to Rodri? Yeah, the- I totally get it. So, you know, that's a very difficult one to manage in terms of players' expectation of how much game time they're going to get. But this, yeah, it feels like we're already sort of trying to hodgepodge what City's midfield is going to be like, which might have an effect on further forward, who gets the balls, you know, to Savio, to Grealish, to Doku, etc. And it could really upset the entire balance of the side. I think... Hope so. I think you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, so that was a question Good I had. Title race. It, what's a bigger loss if you had Odegaard out for the season or Rodri out for the season? Rodri. You, think, <laughs> you blinked. Rodri. Yeah, yeah, you believe Obviously. it. Obviously. You did look, you looked, you did a little bit. Did a little less than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get that uh, Rodri. No, nah, mate, Rodri. Like, he's, he's, you look like you're lacking a lot of creativity without Odegaard. Bro. Yeah. Just I say. agree, Just but say. I think, I think there's other solutions in the same way that. I would say Odegaard personally. Really? Would you? Interesting. Interesting. I think Man City are because this is the thing that people people forget. There's, there's there's like you've got to play Arsenal twice. You've got to play Liverpool twice. Um, but then there's like everyone else that you should be beating. But can you beat them? That is a that is a bigger question mark I would have of Arsenal without Odegaard than Man City without Rodri. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah sense. I suppose because you're expecting City to have and Arsenal to have sixty five percent of the ball in those games, and who's going to be a bigger loss in possession Odegaard but then you know I think there's the Rodri has the biggest gap between any other player in the world in terms of the next best in their position for me like, I don't think there's anyone that's particularly close to Rodri in world football whereas Odegaard there's a there's a ton of Odegaards out there that sounds disrespectful to Odegaard but there's just loads of creative tens out there I, yeah I, get what you're saying. I agree in possession I, I'm 70 he does work there. incredibly hard but out of possession I, th- I think in terms of he's the basis of our off ball stuff and, and what he does do, do you know what there are sections of Arsenal fans who agree with you by the way there's sections of Arsenal fans who don't want Odegaard on the team because they say he's too angry can I clarify that's too... not what I'm saying oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, sorry brilliant. sorry yeah, sorry I was aligning that with you who, who might be yeah, yeah nearer that position I think um yeah, because they're saying he's too angle biased. He doesn't have the transitional quality. If you watch Kevin De Bruyne, it looks like he's running downhill. Odegaard doesn't quite have that. He's more of a sort of tempo setter in the final third. I, I I completely disagree, obviously. But you know, there's lots of people who say Odegaard should move over to the left, and there's there's yeah, lots Odegaard. of conversations around Odegaard. Yeah, I'm really fascinated to see this. And in, in the, the real next, world, in the next three <laughs> weeks, in the next three weeks, oh, I've obviously got the international break, but over the next like, two months, let's say, like creatively, how how Arsenal yeah. get out wrong, but. Yeah. Good news. I'm not, I've been wrong about Arsenal regularly. Um, oh, mate. <laughs> not so. as much as me. <laughs> <laughs>